This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 148. Kevin Tumlinson joins us to chat about his latest book, The 30-Day Author. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you attract and retain business through the power of quality content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is November 12th, 2015. Hello, hello, or as we say in Texas, howdy, and thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. Just a reminder, we are live on iTunes and on Stitcher, so if you're listening to this episode on the blog, you can click on over and subscribe. And if you use a different app for your podcast listening pleasure, we also have an RSS feed, and I will provide that link in the blog post. Also, if you want to learn more about content marketing, I invite you to download our free audio book, Five Things you must know about content marketing. To get your copy, go to contentmarketingaudio.com. That's all one word, contentmarketingaudio.com. I want to say special welcome to my new friend, Paul, in the UK. Paul connected with me on LinkedIn this week, and after I accepted, he sent me a very nice message saying that he enjoys the podcast and never misses an episode. So thank you, Paul, for your kind words. I'm so ing- so happy to hear you're enjoying the podcast, and we are thrilled to have you in our happy little community. Speaking of LinkedIn, I invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn. Would love to be part of your network and have you be part of mine. The URL to my profile is linkedin.com slash in slash resonance content. And make sure you get that slash in in there. That's the key to getting to the right spot. Again, that's linkedin.com slash in slash resonance content. And if you ask, if you request, I will definitely connect with you. Look forward to doing that. Okay, this month is our theme is about ebooks. And in last week's episode, we talked about overcoming ebook anxiety. If you happen to miss that episode, feel free to check it out on iTunes or Stitcher or via the RSS feed. And speaking of books, if you have been meaning to write one, whether an ebook or a book book, yeah, that's a technical term, book book, um, and, and you've been meaning to do it and it just hasn't happened yet, this episode is for you. Kevin Tumlinson is going to join us to talk about his latest book, The 30 Day Author. This one is not to be missed. But first, a time to check in with our news feed for this week's rundown of News You Can Use. If you keep up with all things SEO related and keep your try to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in Google, you may have heard some buzz recently about something called Rank Brain. Um, And this is the, the story originally started in a Bloomberg article by Jack Clark that has gotten picked up and commented on and referred to, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what rank brain is, it is an artificial intelligence that is part of Google's algorithm. I, it's supposedly it's not new. It's just that it's just been discovered by those of us outside the hallowed walls of Google. So there, it's getting a lot of buzz and a lot of digital marketing pros are, are kind of confused about it. Um, like I said, it's part of Google's algorithm. And from what I understand, Rank Brain simply lets Google interpret searches and deliver results that might not match the exact words that are searched for. For example, let's say you walk into a fast food restaurant and you walk up to the counter and you say, yeah, I, I want one of those things with the ground beef patty and it's got a piece of bread under it and another piece on top of it and you can eat it with your hands. Um, and then the person across the counter says, oh, you mean a hamburger. Let me get you one. That's how I understand Rank Brain working. So, you know, you're searching for something. You don't know exactly what it is and you try to describe it. That's what Rank Brain does. It's an artificial intelligence that looks at the search and delivers what the searcher might have intended. Um, What does this mean for marketers? I got to say, I I don't see much 
impact on what we do. It just means that people searching for your content might not be using the exact words associated with your topic. Um, And, you know, as I've said before, I know some diehard SEO guys, and when I ask them what's the best way to please the Google gods, they all say produce quality content on a regular basis that speaks to your audience's needs and speaks their language. So if we're doing that, then rank brain need not affect us at all. But it is getting a lot of buzz, so I wanted to take this opportunity to clarify it. And if you want to know more about it, um, I know there's a really good article on Search Engine Land about it. And um, if you want to learn more about it, just do a search for Rank Brain, and you will learn probably more than you ever intended to know. Uh, also in the news, you may have noticed a change over on Twitter and possibly also on Vine. And that is where the little star used to be. There is now a heart. And that is because the Twitter favorite has been replaced by the like. So previously, there was a little star that let you say, you know, kind of like the thumbs up. Yes, I like this. I, you know, I, I approve of this or whatever. Um, and that was called favoriting or, or f- doing a favorite. Well, that is now liking or, or adding a like, and it's now a little heart. Um, from what I understand, it functions exactly the same as the favorite used to. It's just different. Now, this has been kind of a tempest in a teapot because some people were absolutely outraged because they say, well, just because I favorited something doesn't mean I like it. And there was actually a campaign around the hashtag hate the heart. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I got better things to do <laughs> you know, as long as there are no functional changes when it, it does not appear there are. Um, it's it's the same. So, yes, there is a heart where your star used to be, but it functions exactly the same. So that is what is going on on Twitter this week. Okay, our content hit of the week is a post called How to Market to Goldfish, What Decreasing Decreasing Attention Spans Means Mean for Marketers. Let me start, try and say that again. What Decreasing Attention Spans Mean for Marketers. And this is actually an infographic that was published by Sarah Quinn over on the HubSpot blog. And this infographic informs us that the human attention span is now 8.25 seconds. Yes, it is now shorter than that of a goldfish. And just to put that into perspective, back in 2000, which was only 15 years ago, it was 12 seconds. So attention spans are shrinking due to, um, I think it's due to just the, the, the always on, always connected mentality. We're constantly being, um, our, our attention is being distracted by text messages and pop-ups coming in on our computer and phone calls and apps giving sending us those those little um notifications we're just constantly being distracted and it's taking a toll on our attention span so this infographic talks about some of the ways that we as marketers can adjust to these very very short attention span it's it's things like um you know using video using storytelling um really compelling titles things like that anyway it's it's a good a very good infographic highly recommend it and i will provide a link to it in the blog post for this episode okay that's it for this week's update i hope it held your attention for more than 8.25 seconds if you stumble across something you think might be of interest to your fellow content marketers please shoot it on over to us so that we can share Now it's time for this week's Spotlight segment. Kevin Tumlinson joins us to chat about his new book, The 30-Day Author. Author, blogger, and host of the Word Slinger podcast, Kevin Tumlinson is the author of dozens of novels and nonfiction books, including his popular Citadel science fiction trilogy and his ongoing Sawyer Jackson contemporary fantasy series. He helps entrepreneurs and authors build and grow their business through better writing. From bringing copywriting skills up to Olympian levels to writing a book in 30 days or less, Kevin has a process, a practice, and a program that can help any business do more business. He specializes in helping entrepreneurs build authority fast and in helping indie authors build libraries of their own work. His latest book is The 30-Day Author, and today he joins us to chat about it. Without further ado, here is my interview with Kevin Tumlinson. 
Hey, Kevin, welcome to the podcast. Hey, great. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm sorry. I, I completely fumbled that beginning, but thank you for having me. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, it can go up from here. So yeah. <laughs> You'd think after like two years of actually doing this kind of stuff, I'd have, <laughs> I'd have a nice pat opening. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Actually, I should say welcome back. You are one of the select few who have been, uh, as I call, repeat delighters. So I'm um, <laughs> happy to have you gracing our, our airwaves again. I'm happy to be back once again. Yeah. I, uh, I really enjoyed doing the show the last time. I couldn't wait to get back on. All right. Awesome. Well, for those who were ha- happen to not be there for your first uh, four-way, give us a little background on who you are and what you do. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Kevin Tumleson. I am I, I'm the author of maybe 24-ish books right now. Uh, Mostly fiction. Uh, I write a lot of uh, uh, novels and novellas and that sort of thing. And I've got a couple of nonfiction books out there, uh, one of which is The 30 Day Author. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've spent the past few years, uh, well, I've spent most of my career as a copywriter, which I know you can relate. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, uh, you know, I'm kind of getting to that point in my career where I would really, I'd love to just retire from copywriting. I'm a little... uh, the, the luster of that career has worn off for me a little, but uh, uh, now I, I'm primarily I'm writing books. I'm actually starting to make a pretty decent living at that, and uh, I like to help other people do the same, which is why I have you know two or three podcasts of my own out there. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. I, uh, <laughs> I write books and help other people write books. Awesome, awesome, wonderful. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, most of your career is your writing career has been writing fiction, and so what what inspired you to write the Thirty Day Author? So I um, I actually wrote the first book that I published took me two years to write. Wow. And um, the second book that I published took me two years to write. And then, <laughs> and then another two years went by of me sort of internally screaming and uh, <laughs> having this like two year long existent, existential crisis as I, you know, sort of dreaded the idea of writing that third book because I just couldn't stand the idea of spending another two years of mm. odd hours, you know, mm-hmm. middle of the night or uh, whatever, uh, the odd lunch break or whatever, uh, stressing over writing that third book in that in the trilogy. And uh, there came a point at which I said, you know, this is what I want to do for a living. Like, this is the work I really want to do for a living. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to do this, I have to treat it like a business. And a business can't survive by putting out one product every, you know, six years. Right. So, and authors um, do not do well when they're only putting out a book every two years. Mm -hmm. So I I knew I needed to change something. So I actually... um, I started, you know, paying attention to people who were successful in the industry, paying attention to uh, people who were doing what I want to do, and started kind of uh, pulling out little nuggets of information about how they're doing it. Mm-hmm. And eventually, I kind of came up with this formula, uh, the the what what I call the thirty day author formula. I mean, it's really very simple, um, but you know, this idea of applied time and uh, you know, really discipline, a <laughs> daily writing mm-hmm. discipline. So that's where it came from. Um, It was basically me deciding I'd already wasted enough time writing this trilogy. I wanted to get it done. And I did. I wrote the third book in that trilogy. After two years of procrastination, I wrote that book in 15 days. Mm -hmm. And um, to prove to myself it wasn't a fluke, I decided I would do it, use that formula and and try it again, and I wrote the second. Uh, I wrote another book, not the second book, but another book in fifteen days, and then another book in fifteen days, wow. and then that gave me fifteen days each to uh, polish and, and publish. So mm-hmm. that's where that came from. <laughs> wow! And I think you mentioned in the book you, when you finally wrote that that third book in in fifteen days. You're actually happier with it than the ones that took you two years. I was. I mm-hmm. actually was, and and so were my readers, which mm-hmm. is more important. Um, mm-hmm. But the the story was more cohesive. Uh, it, it felt like a it felt much uh, we'll say freer, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, much more energetic. Um, you know, the the characters were much more likable. The the story itself was just more more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, um, you know, I I, I counted that you know at, at that point it was my favorite of the trilogy. It still is. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it was a great experience. The I think part of it was because I had spent so long and so many hours trying to trudge through the first two books mm-hmm. 
this idea of just lightly going through <laughs> and writing mm-hmm. writing the book with very little pressure, um, you know, it took just, just took loads off my shoulders. So that may be why it's a better, a better book. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I just enjoyed myself more while writing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so getting, getting into the book now, when you, when you coach people on, on writing their books, you coach mm-hmm. fiction as well as nonfiction. Authors, I do. Right? Um, yeah. And I, I really thought when I started doing author coaching, I really thought that's who I would be talking to the most, but it, an odd thing, it turns out that, um, Fiction writers often don't have any money, so they often can't afford to uh, to pay someone for coaching. If they can, I mean, I I really love working with fiction authors. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, just between me, you, and whoever's listening, I mean, I tend to cut something of a discounted rate uh, if you are a fiction author, just because mm-hmm. I know, you're, yeah, because you know, a lot of my clientele are, they're entrepreneurs, so. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I'm helping them, it's usually to help them kind of bring together materials they already have into an ex- into a book. They've got existing stuff, blog posts and articles or, you know, presentations or something like that. And I, mm-hmm. I help them figure out how to organize that into um, a book that they can use as part of their marketing platform. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, I really love when someone comes to me and says, you know, I've always had this idea for a story, but I've never been able to find the time. That's mm-hmm. the that's the key phrase there. Yeah. Find the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and you know, I I kind of yeah. There's a lot of platitudes I could I could give someone, but you know, mm-hmm. the reality is you don't really find time. I mean, you make time, right. and if you care about it, you're going to make that time. Mm-hmm. So I love finding those fiction authors who <laughs> mm-hmm. who. Uh, are not only excited about their story, but but are willing to jump in with both feet and and you know work with me, and we can figure out how to get them from idea to page, you know. And uh, it's not always about thirty days either. I mean, sometimes you know, sometimes you just want to let that breathe for a while. You may not want to do a thirty day book. It's mm-hmm. it can be a lot of pressure, but. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun when I find the folks who do want to do that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. So you mentioned um, motivation a few a few minutes ago about having the motivation to come back every day and do this. Yes. Um, and you start the book by spending a lot of time out talking about your why. So tell us a little about the why and why that's at the beginning. Okay, so that's <laughs> – you really – and you hear that phrase a lot. It's yeah. become sort of trite now. I, I almost hesitated using it. Um but the the reality is you have to know what it is that's driving you to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're an entrepreneur and, you know, anyone who listened to our first interview, um, that, you know, I hit on a lot of the key points as to why you would want a book uh, mm-hmm. for your business. And, you know, one of those is it's like the ultimate business card, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the the thing is, if you're an entrepreneur, you're probably writing a book because your, your why at that point is you're trying to – um, you know, consolidate your ideas and get them to your audience and expand your business. And that's a good enough reason. Uh, for fiction authors, a lot of times the why will be something like, you know, they've had this story that, that they've kicked around their whole lives or, you know, for the past few months even. And uh, they've just got to get that story told. It, mm-hmm. it, it's killing them that, you know, I was going to say Michael Bay, but Michael Bay wouldn't do a good story. But uh, – <laughs> It's killing them that, you know, uh, Stephen King is not writing a book about this story or, right. you know, they're not seeing anything in the theater and they just really want it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it goes deeper than that, too. And I and I, I really sort of discussed this in in the book. I mean, your why is is that driving force mm. behind, um, you know, what's going to make you sit down every day and do this, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. just having the desire to to have a book is often not enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of times people, you know, I always remember this story. I tell, I've, I told this story recently on another podcast. Um, when I was in college getting my master's degree, I believe the, uh, they had a job fair and, um, among the people who came to the job fair were uh, some representatives of the FBI and all I know of the FBI, honestly, is what I've seen on TV and Mm -hmm. (laughs) films and read in books and it seems like a fairly exciting, you know, career. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you look at the new uh, promo for Quantico, uh, mm-hmm. apparently a lot of hot chicks go to. Yeah, the, lots, the lots of sex going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I um, I went by the booth and um, 
I, you know, I was, I was already writing at that point, but I, I, you know, I'd already been, I've been writing since I was 12. So writing was something I was planning to do. Um, but you know, I talked to the uh, representative at the FBI and I said, you know, I never thought about the FBI. This would be a great career. Maybe, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd love to, maybe there's a role for someone like me. What do you think? And she looks me square in the eye and says, you don't go into the FBI because you think it's a neat idea. You go in the FBI because you've always wanted to be in the FBI, mm-hmm. you know? And that hit home for me. And I've, I've thought about that a thousand times over the years because it's the same with writing. Mm-hmm. You know, your why is you've been driven to do this forever. Yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. maybe you just never took the step. Maybe you were afraid or intimidated. Um, but you're going to have to figure out what it is that drives you to do this before you can commit. And mm-hmm. commitment is really what it's all about. Mm-hmm. You know, sitting down every single day, you know, then that's what the book does. I mean, it tells you flat out. I don't I don't make any bones about it. I mean, this is about sitting down every single day mm-hmm. and committing to writing a set number of words every single day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you uh, start in the morning and you don't hit that number and come back in the afternoon or come back in the evening and finish and mm-hmm. um, that's that's really what it comes down to. And if you don't have a, a serious driving force, mm-hmm. you know, a serious reason to do that, mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to ever complete something, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. this is, you know, I mean, writing is a business that gets pretty lonely sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it sucks to be sitting there, you know, um, while your, your family is, uh, you know, watching the latest, you know, Walking Dead. Well, maybe not your whole family, uh, but, <laughs> you know, or something along those lines. And, mm-hmm. you know, you uh, haven't finished your 1500 words that day. So mm-hmm. you've got to sneak off and quietly sob on your keyboard, you know, mm-hmm. so you right. really need to be clear <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> as to why you're doing it. And it has mm-hmm. to be more than I think it would be neat to have my name on the spine of a book. I mm-hmm. mean, that can be one good reason, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's not, you know, it's not going to be empowering. My, yeah. My friend uh, Nick Thacker, whom I um, I co-host the self-publishing answers podcast with Nick, and we also we've co-written a couple of books, and we're mm-hmm. we you know we're 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 bros. Um, he talks about you know the first time he wrote and published a book, um, his grandfather had passed away. He, he and his grandfather shared a love for reading. Mm-hmm. Uh, his father shared a love for reading, and Nick thought you know it would be really awesome if I could give my dad a book that had my name on the spine, mm. you know, that would be a, it, just a gift. It, it, he wanted it to look as good as anything you'd find in Barnes and Noble. And he wanted it to be a, a real book. And so he, he went out of his way and did that. And that launched him into a, uh, a career as a, as a novelist. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, his why was, I want to give my father this book. And it could be as simple as that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of the first part of the book is talking about um, developing that daily writing habit. Why is, what is it that separates, what is it, what is it magical about the daily practice as opposed to, okay, I'm going to set aside Fridays and just write. What is, you know, what is so magic about that daily practice? I struggled with that. Um, yeah, I have my, I have all my old journals mm-hmm. from when, it, from, you know, life, you know, all the way back to uh, uh, grade school. And uh, I went through those a, a year or two ago, and I found this one entry, and it said, and it was modern times, I mean, you know, 2000 something, mm-hmm. and it said, um, I will find, it was my list of goals and commitments, right? And it, one of them said, I will find two hours a week in which I will write. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when I look back on that now, I'm like, wow, right. <laughs> you know, um, two hours um, a week. But mm-hmm. the thing is, um, I was never – that me had written a book already and published mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. was uh, – possibly had written the second book, but was struggling to write that third book. And the reason I was struggling was because I was giving myself an air gap there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with this term. I hear it on TV all the time now. I, I used to – I used to own this term exclusively. No one ever knew it. But there's <laughs> a term called an air gap computer. Okay. And um, what that is is a it's a computer that's never been connected to the internet. Ah, okay. <clears throat> and uh, you know that means that it, it can't be corrupted. No one no one can know the contents of it. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of what I was doing with my writing. Like I was creating an air gap. I wasn't connecting it 
to the rest of my life. And so uh, I wasn't able to, uh, I'm totally using that term as my own now, but I mean, <laughs> I wasn't able to draw on the energy of what I was doing every day, which yeah. was writing for clients and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fact is, if you can develop the habit of, of sitting down and writing to a word goal every single day, mm -hmm. something magical happens. Um, two things, really. I mean, the first is you get into a habit where writing stops being this chore that you dread and just starts being this, you know, this habit that you're in that you do every day. Mm -hmm. And it becomes very comfortable and easy for you to do. It really does. I mean, to the listener, I know that sounds insane, um, <laughs> especially if writing is something you dread. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, if you can get yourself into the habit of writing even I'm going to I'm I have not scientifically investigated this Rachel but I mean I'm I'm guessing that even if you committed to writing a paragraph a day you know you could get yourself into the habit of mm -hmm. I'm going to knock out that you know, like you know 200 words you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean I think you could I think you could get that uh to be a, a reflex mm -hmm. uh but the second part of that is um um you uh the, the the second big magic that comes out of that is uh, it's like it's kind of like compound interest. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever anyone talks to you about investing, <clears throat> they um, they always bring up compound interest mm -hmm. and they will tell you, you know, if you had put a thousand dollars into this account and just added, you know, five dollars a week, you mm -hmm. know, by now, by this time in in twenty years, you'd be a multimillionaire, right? Mm -hmm. uh, through the power and magic of compound interest, and it's the same with um, writing long format writing of any kind. Mm -hmm. I mean, adding five hundred to fifteen hundred words a day <laughs> to the uh, to your pages will create a book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. in in thirty day author, that's the formula. I actually tell people to aim for around fifteen hundred. I think 1,700 words actually is, is the real magic bullet for knocking out a 50,000-word novel in 30 days. Okay. And uh, um, yeah, I'm going to embarrass myself because I didn't um, memorize it. But, <laughs> but the fact is that formula mm -hmm. um, allows you to write a book in manageable chunks. Mm -hmm. And that's the secret to writing long format anything. Mm -hmm. If you're going to write a script, if you're going to write a, a book, if you're going to write even – you know, uh, a marketing presentation, mm -hmm. you know, find out what your end date is, your your deadline, find out how many words, you know, you, you want to have when you're done <laughs> and mm -hmm. then divide it all up into uh, how many words per day. And that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It's really that simple. Yeah. I think another thing, um, Kevin, is that is that that daily, you, ju you just build this momentum and it yeah. just kind of keeps going. I remember... I went when I was still working full time. I went through a uh, a screenwriting phase, and I mm -hmm. took a screenwriting course. And I would do kind of like you to you know maybe a couple hours on Sunday, and then pick it up again Wednesday night, and then um, do thirty minutes on Friday and get struck. And every time I sat down, it's like okay, what what is this? You know, having to reorient myself right. to the story all over again. Whereas when I did get into that daily practice, it's like you're already there. And I mean, just gloss over what you've done. It's like okay. Let's do this rather right. than having to reorient. Well, yeah, it, it, it forces you – well, no, let's put it a different way. You, um, you cease the starting over mentality, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if you're only dedicating – you know, I'm going to write on Fridays. I've got Fridays off or whatever. You know, I'm, I work half days on Fridays, so the other half of the day I can write. Mm -hmm. um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I mean mm -hmm. to this day, I, I mean true confession time – between books, mm -hmm. you know, I will sometimes get out of the habit of writing every day, not really get out of the habit, but, you know, I'll, I'll ser seriously curtail the number of hours I put in or the number of words I put in each day um, in favor of doing something else because sometimes you, it's just about recharging. Um, but I still um, – I don't know. I still come back to the keyboard every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think I just negated my entire argument there. But I, mm -hmm. I, I, I may not work on the same thing every day. Let's just right. put it that way. Mm -hmm. Like it may not be the same book right. uh, mm -hmm. during that time or it may not be a short story. It may just mm -hmm. be some, writing some ad copy, you know, mm -hmm. writing some uh, um, autoresponder emails or something. Mm -hmm. um, anything that kind of shifts my brain a little. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is, if you're only writing once a week, I mean, what? 
<laughs> you know, what effect is that going to have on your life? Like right. if you're only working out one day a week, mm-hmm. you know, you're probably not going to get buff. You know, mm-hmm. you're probably not going to even lose any weight. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, even the, a serious hard workout once a week isn't really going to do you much good. You know, it may actually harm you. So, mm-hmm. and that's always the analogy, right? We want to always compare writing to exercise because as writers, we don't get enough exercise. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. so if we can equate the two, mm-hmm. we can uh, assuage our guilt. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's the key. Um, You don't want to relegate writing to, you know, a specific day Mm -hmm. (laughs) or a specific time of day necessarily even. Um, Although I'm a morning person. I do all my writing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, But I can't limit myself and say I only write in the morning. If I didn't hit my numbers that day, Mm -hmm. then um, I should go out of my way to try to knock those out before I turn in for the evening. Mm -hmm. Like I... I should squeeze in the odd hours at lunch if I'm a, if I have a day job or um well I'm just even if it's just you know I'm standing in line at the grocery store and I w- whip out my iPhone and get into Evernote and I write you know a, a few sentences mm-hmm. I mean I've got to I've got to be committed to that number if mm-hmm. I want to keep you know keep up my standard right mm-hmm. so yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And and two things that you mentioned in that first part of the first part of the book are daily blogging and daily journaling. Yes. How do those kind of figure into the So and I, I'm a little hard on people in that I kind of keep saying, you know, I think you should do all of these. Um <laughs> but and the only reason I say that is because I figure if I tell you you should do all of them, you know, you're probably gonna average out to one of them, you know. Mm-hmm. Um but I think I think journals um, are a fantastic way to sort of hone your craft and, um, you know, get into a daily habit. And that's really what that first half of the book really is about. It really is just about developing the habit and the, mm-hmm. the, the more practical stuff comes in the second half of the book. But mm-hmm. the, uh, the, that idea of, you know, sitting down with your journal, I think journals are fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, I've kept a journal my whole life and mm-hmm. I love the fact that I can go back and look at a day in my life, you know, and I haven't always been consistent about it. I've been pretty inconsistent the past, you know, couple of months, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but th- those are fantastic because, you know, and I also tell people in the book, you should treat all writing as practice writing. You know, mm-hmm. everything is professional writing if you treat it like professional writing. Wow. And, uh, you know, so emails and that sort of thing. When people get emails from me, yeah, I do a little bit of slang and, and that sort of thing. But it's it's no different than what I would write as dialogue, for example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I use those as as practice. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're writing daily in a journal and you're writing about what you feel, I mean, that's invaluable as an author of anything. I mean, you your perspective is why you write a book. So mm-hmm. you providing your perspective in a daily journal is just going to be, you know, grist for the mill, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same with blogs. And the thing, the advantage of blogs, of course, is um, now you might you may vary the amount of of uh, personal perspective that you put in a blog, that's up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but the uh, the advantage of blogs is that they draw traffic to your website, as you well know. I mean, as uh, SEO uh, or search engine optimization content, mm-hmm. you know, blogs can be invaluable as an author. Uh, even if let's just slip away from fiction for a bit, but I mean, even if you're an entrepreneur and you're going to write a book about your specific topic, Mm -hmm. then blogging every day does a lot for you. It draws a lot of traffic to your site, but it also gives you material that you can cannibalize as part of your book. And um, while I I, I often recommend against wholesale lifting blog content and making it a book, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, there's nothing really wrong with it. There are advantages and disadvantages depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. My personal perspective on that is write your content, your original content as blog posts on your blog Mm -hmm. and take that content and um, update it for a Mm -hmm. book Mm -hmm. and instead of just, you know, flat out copying it. Right. And the the big thing there is you're you're wanting to provide value to your reader. Mm -hmm. Um, And if they can, if they know... Well, you know, if it comes, I don't know that there's going to be a rebellion here, but if the reader says, you know, I got this exact same content for free Uh (laughs) from your blog, so why did I just pay, you know, a couple of bucks for your book? Or if you're using the book as a, um, 
you know, a lead magnet, Mm -hmm. you know, top of the funnel and someone downloads it and they realize, oh, this is just the same content that's on your blog. You know, now you have my email address and all I got was your blog. You know, Mm -hmm. you you might offend people. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But my my uh, my sort of technique there is to just play it safe. And uh, instead of, you know, you can repurpose things by actually adding new perspective. Mm -hmm. It's okay to use the same phrasing, the same data, the same examples, Mm -hmm. but add some new perspective. And I think you're you're good. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, those are. Those are two of the ways, you know, and I I have lots of ways that I tell people they can develop a daily writing habit. Um, and I do sort of cheat and tell people, you know, you should try all of them mm-hmm. and, and do all of them um, because I, 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 I have this weird uh, perspective that, you know, writing is something you should try to do a lot of <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to get better and, and you know, train your brain. But mm-hmm. do what you can handle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Blogs. If I had to recommend any of those practices above the others, I'd probably recommend a blog. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. because you get more value out of it. Um, no matter what your goals are, you can, mm-hmm. you know, you can always leverage a blog. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So when we get into part two of the book, that's when you actually get into the 30 day author process. Right. And you start right. off talking about, of all things, math. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, <laughs> I am notoriously uh, not a fan of math, um, but uh, yes, because that's what it came down to for me was to realize that, and it's the, it's the example I discussed earlier where it's like compound interest, you know. Mm. Um, once I realized that to get from zero to, you know, let's say 50,000 words uh, was literally just a matter of chunking X amount of words on the page every single day, it changed my life. Like I... I it went from, oh, my God, I've got to write this long freaking book <laughs> with, you know, and, and it's about goals, right? Because, you know, if you don't know what where, what your end game is, how do you get there, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, you know, it helped me a lot to sit down and figure out, well, what is the average length of a book? And I, I started off, like, Googling that. Like, I, I Googled way back in 2008 or something. I'm like, mm-hmm. average length of a book and, or minimum length of a book. You know, that's what I actually did because it was like, how little can I write, you know, to actually qualify as a book? Mm-hmm. And that's where I kind of came across, you know, like Chris Beatty's book, uh, No Plot, No Problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the founder of NaNoWriMo, mm-hmm. which is um, – for the listener, is uh, National Novel Writing Month, which is this month, November. Is it? No. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, most people uh, either uh, don't know that or are ignoring it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Don't hear you. I always joke with people that every month is National Novel Writing Month for me. So. <laughs> yes. um, but the, the minimum uh, word length for a book to enter NaNoWriMo is 50,000 words. So mm-hmm. you're going to write 50,000 words in one month. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I first read that book, I'm like, oh, man, you are insane. And he actually, when you read that book, he's talking about how, you know, it's this harrowing experience where where you're like, you know, losing sleep and skipping out on family dinner. And, you know, you're just sacrificing everything in the cause of this book for 30 days just to get those 50,000 words. Mm -hmm. And that sounded terrible to me. Like, I'm like, (laughs) forget it. I I don't want to do a book in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Um, But then uh, uh, looking closer in years later with perspective, I realized that, you know, he's talking primarily about somebody who's got a day job, who's, you know, got huge family responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And he's literally all he's saying is you just have to make the time to write, Mm -hmm. you know. And it really is just about doing it every day to get to get it yeah. done. If you focus on this and you focus on a number, you can get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, so the I start off with math in that section, <laughs> to and I give the formula. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will give the formula away for free. You don't even have to buy the book to get the formula. It's it's reinforced in the book, but I mean I have this process called um, I, 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 do, I break it down into uh, acronyms. So it's mm-hmm. total total word target or or TWT mm-hmm. divided by target days to completion, mm-hmm. which is TDC, okay. which we also know as a deadline. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, if you divide those, you get your total daily target, TDT. Mm-hmm. And the idea there is if I plug in numbers now and do maths, as the British would say, mm-hmm. um, 
50,000 words, that's, let's just say that's our minimum target. Mm -hmm. So 50,000 words divided by 30 days mm -hmm. comes out to just under 1,700 words per day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means that in, in, 50, in 30 days, if you're committed to writing that number of words, you can knock out an entire first draft of a book in, in that number of days. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you want to take the weekends off, it, instead of 30 days, you divide it by 22 days, and then you've got you know around 2,200 words each day. Mm -hmm. And those, that, that number is much more manageable because yeah. now that you know... It's still a big number. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think that the average email is somewhere around uh, 200 words, mm -hmm. you know, and and what people consider to be a lengthy email is probably somewhere around 300 words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you start thinking in terms of that, I mean, you know, 2,000 words is, is quite a lot, but um, or seemingly quite a lot. Mm -hmm. But you, if you start thinking in terms of, you know, every day you probably chunk out about 2,500 random words. Right. It's really not that difficult. And you're, the, the key there was to stop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I do some math. And I, I tell people, you know, the average, the average uh, like if you get a six by nine trade paperback book, you know, the average number of words in, on a page comes to around 350 words. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you're talking about, um, you know, 1500 words, you're talking about maybe five to six pages of, of writing a day mm -hmm. and you don't have to do it all at once. I mean, you can get up in the morning and before you go to work, knock out 500 words and mm -hmm. <laughs> 500 at lunch and 500 in the evening. And, mm -hmm. um, if that's, you know, if that works for you, but mm -hmm. the key is to commit and do that number. And it really all comes down to uh, making a finite number that's attainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, so one thing that, that okay, you total, totally busted me on. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at the page right now. Okay, I have this nasty habit, and I know others do as well. I sit down to write. I say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do my words today. I, put in, I write, get two sentences written, and I want to tweak them. Immediately. Yes. Yes. So tell me about the internal editor and <laughs> how to wrangle this beast that that haunts all of us. You know, I I I in the book, I, I use the phrase you have one job <laughs> <laughs> and um, I am also guilty of that. You know, in the past, I'm not so much anymore, but we writers, even we not, you know, non-professional writers, I mean, especially the non-professional writers, actually, in my in my finding, um, we have a tendency – we were just trained – I mean, let's just face it. From from grade school up, mm -hmm. we were trained that we had to get it perfect the first time. Like you, mm -hmm. you have to get the writing done and it has to be perfect the first time. Even though we're told over and over again to write a first draft and then rewrite it, you know, we'll do anything to avoid rewriting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so and especially in school. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you write – and you try to get it perfect the first time, which means you you edit as you write, and that mm -hmm. slows you down. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is it's not slowing you down by half. It's actually slowing you down exponentially. Mm. Wow. Um, because if you were to just write, I, it, it's interesting because if you, if you just chose to write an entire uh, page mm -hmm. and then went back and edited that page – you'd probably find a lot fewer errors. Mm -hmm. And so you would spend on average less time editing yeah. than if you were to edit as you go. Mm -hmm. And I use the phrase, um, you have one job. Mm -hmm. Basically, as a writer, you're a writer. Mm -hmm. you don't, you're not an editor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you want to hold off on that job until you're done with the writing. Then you can become the editor. Mm -hmm. And if you were to do, if you were in the uh, traditional publishing world, if you worked in a, you know, uh, well, you know, it, it, a lot of these places, if you if you try to do someone else's job in, on any job, mm -hmm. you know, if you're trying to do someone else's job, you get fired, you know? <laughs> so mm -hmm. because um, just like trying to brush your teeth and chew bubble gum at the same time, you know, <laughs> it doesn't work. No. You know, you can't do these two things at once. So mm -hmm. and they're two very different skill sets. So mm -hmm. that's probably more than just writing X number of words per day or month or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'd say the biggest challenge in this is turning off the internal editor. Sure. Because 
that internal editor, he is a grouse. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he wants to control everything he sees mm-hmm. and it or she sees, mm-hmm. uh, to be politically correct. But <laughs> if if you are, um, you know, if your goal is to write um, long format stuff full time, mm-hmm. you cannot spend your time editing while you're writing. It's just going to keep you from, from finishing anything mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really just it's far better. And it, we do it because. Honestly, we do it because we don't we don't want to have to go back and edit. You know, we we don't want to look at it again. We want it to be perfect and finished <laughs> when we're done. And the, the truth is, it's never going to be if you do that. And in fact, the likelihood of you actually completing a, a long format manuscript if you are editing as you go is something like I mean, I'm just to completely make up a figure here. I'm going to say it's like less than two percent. Wow. You know, uh, and I am completely making that figure up. But the mm-hmm. the fact is. I've known a ton of people. I can think of one in particular. I mean, I've got a guy in mind. I can mm-hmm. picture his face. Mm-hmm. He's been working on a book for the past 12 years. Oh, my gosh. And has not gotten past chapter three. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And his, he <laughs> insists that his method of it's going to be perfect before I even move on mm-hmm. is the best way because that way he doesn't waste time mm. later having to edit. I just watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been watching for 12 years, you know, because he's never going to finish that book in our lifetime, right. you know, if at all. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> I, you know, and he's it's it's funny because he knows exactly how it should go, exactly how it should end. He has all the characters. He has got little mm-hmm. character sketches and everything. Mm-hmm. We'll have writing sessions where, you know, we get together at Starbucks and he's working on his book. And uh, he writes by hand. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, well, no, he does, he does like a draft by hand and then types it up. So mm-hmm. nothing at all wrong with this. Yeah. It's just that the proof is in the pudding here. He's not right. finishing and mm-hmm. he never will. So, yeah, my big – probably a, that's a really big takeaway from the book really is to turn off that editor. And not just on long format. I mean when I, when I do any copywriting, um, I write this – I write it first. And come back later. Like mm-hmm. if I, yeah. if I sit there and think about it as I'm writing it, um, it's not that I won't finish it; it's that it won't be good. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Because <laughs> you're, you know, your subconscious kind of mm-hmm. kicks in a little while you're writing, and um, if you can trust that, yeah, you know, I mean, think about when you've been in a crowd of your friends, and you're you're talk, you're all talking. Um, you know, Seth Godin. I, I quote this. And I have this excerpt in the book about um, Mm -hmm. writer's block. Mm -hmm. And he talks about, you know, no one ever talks about talker's block. And that's because, you know, we we understand talking. We know that there's sort of a a margin for error there that no one's going to... We do it every day, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just just something we're used to. It's a daily (laughs) habit. And we we probably knock out much more than 50,000 words. Um, I've probably done more than that in this podcast. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the, the key takeaway there really, is that, you know, if you write the way you would normally speak and you just let it flow, you can always come back and edit it for grammar or something yeah. later. Mm-hmm. But the, your tendency is going to be to say the right thing. When you're with your friends and you're all goofing off or whatever and you, cr- you accidentally kind of crack that perfect joke at the right time, mm-hmm. you know, you didn't pre-plan it. But it was there. Your subconscious is working on it, you know, and they, mm-hmm. it gets its cues and it does its thing. Um, that's what that's kind of the key to good writing mm-hmm. is to just relax and be a writer. Right. And then later you can take on the job of the editor. Mm-hmm. Although I still recommend I 100 percent recommend finding an, an outside editor for your work. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely go back and do your rewrites, but mm-hmm. get an outside editor to look at your yeah. work. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Kevin, I thank you for for sharing some of some of the gems of wisdom. We didn't go into all the good stuff because we do want you to sell some books here. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> so please tell our listeners uh, if they would like to obtain a copy of the Thirty Day Author, where would they go and what would they do? All right, the best way at the moment. Uh, it's available on all platforms. So if you go on any platform, Amazon, Kobo, uh, iBooks, and type uh, 30 Day Author, you will find it. Um, and I am working on the website. We've had a snafu. Uh, so I don't even want to give the URL out right now, which is a bummer because uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll have it finished before um, this goes live. But uh, if you go to kevintumlinson.com slash, and I was an idiot and hyphenated, but 
30-day-author. So kevintomlinson.com slash 30, that's 30 dash day dash author. And there's a registration box there right now, but I'm planning on kind of beefing that page up a little, okay. uh, offering it for sale. But you can at least get on the mailing list there. Mm-hmm. But the best way to buy it is to just simply go to your favorite online retailer mm-hmm. and uh, and type 30 day author you know, or Kevin Tomlinson, you can do both. Okay. And uh, you'll find my entire uh, library of books that way. <laughs> okay. And what should we do if we buy a copy of the book and read it and like it? You should definitely, if you love me, um, you should uh, review that book on Amazon first, uh, uh, King among all uh, among, among other uh, distributors. Mm-hmm. Review that book on Amazon and uh, Goodreads. And mm-hmm. A lot of times, if you are an Amazon reader, if you're a Kindle reader, um, you know it will prompt you to review the book, which is nice. Um, but even if you're not, I do have uh, little you know messages in there that remind people. But the thing is, and I don't know if everyone realizes this, but for authors, those reviews are just gold. I mean, we can't you know that will make or break a career. So yeah, if you read it and you like it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, definitely leave me you know four or five stars and and a nice review. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it, um, just do me a favor and don't Hit even work it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zip your lip. <laughs> yeah. And I and I want to say also uh, that the book isn't for everyone. I mean, it's aimed primarily. Um, I do have I do mention fiction writers because I like working with fiction writers. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's aimed primarily at entrepreneurs who who recognize the need for a book as part of their marketing. Yeah. Um, and it is about heads, you know, getting your head in the game uh, first, and then there's some practical stuff in the second half of the book. Mm-hmm. So uh, it isn't for everyone. I think it might get a bad reaction if you are already, you know, proficient at the craft of writing. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, other than to just get the formula, which you got for free on the show anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, there are some nice tips in there for, you know, I actually go a little bit into marketing. I go a little bit into, uh, you know, not heavily, but, but if you're just kind of starting out, it's actually a good resource, I think. So Mm -hmm. if you want to pick it up for that, but you know, I'm not a, I didn't write it for everybody. I wrote it for a specific crowd. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you're an entrepreneur who is looking to, uh, boost their business and could use a book to build their platform, this is a book for you, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay, one more thing. We have a new feature here on okay. the Content Marketing Podcast. We have the Rapid Fire Five. So these are five semi-random questions okay. chosen by myself, and you just answer with the first thing that comes to mind. All right. All right. Are it's you like ready? A, it's like a podcasting Rorschach test. Exactly. Okay. All right. Number one, ballpoint, rollerball, or fountain pen? Fountain pen. Fountain pen. Good man. <laughs> Question number two: Best Doctor Who. Eleven. <laughs> Which is uh, Matt Smith. Matt Smith, got it. <laughs> Question three: Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Trek. Star Trek. Question four: Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts, or Shipley's? Ooh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> and final question, Kevin: Your favorite place to not wear pants? Everywhere. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. All right, Kevin. Thank you again for joining us, and uh, we will uh, look forward to having you back to talk about the next book. How's that sound? Fantastic. Thank you so much. All, All right. right. Take All care. Right. Many thanks again to Kevin Tumlinson for joining us to talk about the 30-day author. Again, the it is available on Amazon and through many of your favorite online booksellers. And I know on Amazon, it's only $4.99. So um, very, very reasonable price. And I have to say, he packs a lot of really good advice into a fairly slim volume. So definitely thumbs up from this would-be 30-day author. Okay, if you have any questions or wish to add to the conversation, I would love to hear from you, and I will give that contact info at the end of the podcast. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. For today's tip, let's talk about choosing a topic for your ebook. The key here is to choose a topic that is absolutely compelling to your audience. Sometimes clients will come to me and ask me to create an ebook for them, and when they tell me the topic they want, it's very clearly something that is fascinating to them, 
but not necessarily something that would attract someone in their audience to say, yes, I want this. Here's my email address. Here's my other information. So when you think about the topic, a good place to start is to look at the content you've already produced. Look at which blog posts have gotten the most traffic. Look at which podcasts got the most downloads or which webinars got the biggest registration numbers. Those numbers are going to tell you a powerful story about the topics that are of greatest interest to your audience. So use that information going forward and pick the perfect topic for your ebook, and you will be well on your way to creating a powerful resource that will give you outstanding results. Results. Okay, campers, that is it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. I want to say thanks again to our special guest, Kevin Tomlinson, and I want to remind you to pick up a copy of his book, The 30-Day Author. It's available on Amazon for just $4.99, and if you download it and read it and like it, uh, please leave a review. I know Kevin would greatly appreciate it. There's these authors on Amazon, as he said, they, they live and die by reviews. So if you have if something good to say, even just a couple of words, please do uh, think about leaving a review on Amazon. Okay, if you like what you've heard today, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or via our RSS feed. And actually, we'll be coming soon to Google Play Music, so stay tuned for that. And if you really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review. We also uh, thrive on reviews and would love to hear your feedback. Also, if you don't want to learn more about content marketing, I invite you to download our free audio, Five Things You Must Know About Content Marketing. To get your copy, go to content marketingaudio.com. As always, I like to leave you with a quote, and today's comes from Maya Angelou. She once said, quote, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style, unquote. Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing. Thank you again for listening, and we will see you again next week. Take care.